amigos, Javier here for Home of the Earth. Welcome to Cartagena, Colombia, capital of the Bolivar Department. Has a population of about a million people. And the main industries are maritime related, so kind of trading in the sea, petrochemicals, and tourism. So that's a few modern day facts about Cartagena. But today we're going to be taking a look in the past at what might be the most significant uh, city in terms of historical importance in Colombia and maybe even Latin America. So even though Venezuela was the first main site of colonization for the Spanish, Cartagena became the most important city. Uh, this is initially because it was strategically located between the Magdalena and Sino rivers. So it became the main port between Spain's, uh, Spain and its overseas empire. So this was around 1540s. This is Plaza de la Aduana. This was where all of the imports coming in from Europe or maybe even other places uh, would get inspected. So that would be a lot of items given that Cartagena was the main port or the biggest port for Latin America at the time. Cartagena was the main marketplace for buying and selling uh, slaves in Latin America. And I believe that's why uh, we have darker skinned people in Colombia. that all the gold and silver and other valuable materials that were that were being excavated in Latin America by the Spanish were coming to Cartagena to be put on boats to be sent back to Spain. So naturally this made Cartagena a very uh, attractive target for pirates that were either directly or indirectly even being encouraged or helped by the French, uh, English, and Spanish. No, yes, yes. So the city was pillaged multiple times. Following these raids, King Philip II in 1586 employed the Italian engineer Juan Battista Antonelli to design a master plan of an 11 kilometer wall that would protect Cartagena from uh, getting raided like it had been done several times construction of this massive military wall took over 200 years to complete. But it was worth it because nearly 200 years later after the construction began during the Jenkins War when the British wanted to take over the Spaniards land in South America or Latin America rather uh, 23,600 men were sent and were defeated 
by 10 times less that amount or approximately 2,800 uh, Spanish men just at their positions in the fortress and they were able to uh, defeat the uh, British force of 10,000 more men. So that speaks to the point at which the walls of Cartagena made uh, the, the city impregnable. So now that the city was fortified, the trade of silver uh, would go mostly on without a hitch. So the beginning in the mid 18th century till the end of the century uh, was called the Silver Age. So the Spaniards and I guess the Spanish Americans we could call them uh, were moving a lot of silver, most of it coming from Peru. So as a result of this, Cartagena was now Spanish America or Latin America's wealthiest city. This encouraged the Spanish Vice Royalty in Spanish America to move to Cartagena. Spanish felt that Cartagena was so important that building 11 kilometers of walls around the city wasn't enough and thus began the construction of the castle you're currently looking at, San Felipe de Barajas. So as you, as you can see, the castle has multiple different kind of uh, layers that served as bunkers, which made it extremely difficult to overtake because you'd be receiving gunfire and uh, cannon fire from different levels in different locations. This castle is one of the largest structures uh, in Colombia and it's believed to be the most intricate uh, structure ever built by the Spaniards. Its intricacy can't really be seen from the outside here, but within all these layers is a uh, system of tunnels. If you can see over there how there's holes in the, the bricks, uh, so th those are holes for putting muskets through them to uh, shoot at invaders. And you see that throughout holes throughout all of the layers of the castle, which means that within all those layers, like I said, there's tunnels with uh, armed men inside during an attack shooting from all the different levels uh, and obviously very hard to shoot at them given that they're shooting out of a small hole pretty impressive here's the old clock tower that marks the entrance to the city or at least used to be the entrance to the city when Cartagena uh, the entirety of the city was within the walls If you've done any traveling in Latin America, chances are you've heard the name Simon Bolivar, aka the Liberator. His parents were two extremely rich Spaniards, some of the richest in Cartagena. Unfortunately, they died when he was at a very young age. And he was described as being a spoiled brat.
one day Bolivar took a ship to Spain and because of the social status that he had inherited from his parents uh, had the privilege of meeting the Spanish royalty and was thoroughly unimpressed by their character. After quite a bit of studying, partying, being a socialite in both Europe and Spanish America, uh, Bolivar began to develop ideals and morals relating to the position of Latin America in regards to uh, being a colony of Spain. He received tutelage from Francisco de Miranda, who was someone that strongly believed that uh, that Latin America should separate from Spain, claim its independence. And the two began to build a plan regarding how independence would be achieved. In fact, this plaza here was a popular meeting spot for uh, rebels wanting to support the cause for independence. And Cartagena was where the constitution of independence was uh, eventually created and signed. So this was obviously not an easy task. And it took a lot to accomplish. Francisco de Miranda uh, spent the latter part of his life in jail, imprisoned by Spanish royalists in uh, in, I believe Venezuela and Simon de Bolivar was exiled I believe three times participated in numerous battles uh, towards the end many of which uh, he was leading the charge hence the name the Liberator Due to weak leadership in Spain, France saw an opportunity to uh, conquer and they did briefly. So this meant that a lot of the troops that were in Latin America were then diverted back to Spain to help the situation there, uh, which was a good opportunity for Simon Bolivar and the other uh, rebels supporters of the a dream of an independent Gran Colombia, as it was called, uh, took advantage to overtake multiple cities uh, who were under Spanish royalist rule, including the capital at the time, and still to this day, I guess, of Bogota. after Bogotá was captured, the remaining of the Spanish troops were left in Cartagena and the rebel for forces successfully conquered Cartagena. And that was a key pivotal point in the independence of the new country of Gran Colombia. So I hope you enjoyed this historical tour of Cartagena. Definitely love the city. I think uh, even if you weren't into history, you would have a great time just walking around, but 
knowing what happened here and its importance uh, for me makes it that much better. I'm almost sure that I probably got one or two facts uh, off, but I think for the most part, uh, I was fairly accurate. If it's something that interests you, there's a lot more information available online. I definitely recommend the uh, Revolutions podcast. Put the name of the author and a subtitle here because I can't think of it right now. So I really enjoyed my time in Cartagena, especially since it was my first city in uh, Colombia. I also got to check out a few other things that uh, might be making videos of, such as So I was in Colombia as part of my first ever bicycle tour going from Canada to Argentina. If you'd like to see an interactive map of everywhere that I've been and everything that I saw, you can head over to my website, followthehumattheearth.com. And if you'd like to follow my continuing adventures, you can do so by subscribing to my YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed, have a good one.